If you're watching with us today and not listening only, you know, you're looking at this guy and you're like, man, that is a good looking 30 year old, <laughs> right? I'm actually 87. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not far off, bro. Like, seriously, like, seriously, tell everybody how old you are. Uh, I'm actually 44. 44. But, I'm, yeah. I'm 40. I'd see. What is this? I'm 43. I just turned yeah. 43, right? So yeah, you look good, too. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot of work that goes into this. Yeah, yeah. You talked about flow and that's something else we've been talking about a ton because like I'm literally like the CRM um, that we use that, that uh, I designed, we call it prospect workflow. Yeah, yeah. Your work has the flow, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. your leads and, uh, and everything has the flow through the funnel Correct. to get to the finish line, to get to, to happy mm -hmm. customer and so on and so forth. And then your cut and then your customer state has the flow mm -hmm. to be a continued happy customer. Right. So the yeah. flow is important. And it's funny, like, you know, if, um, if, if the water's coming out too fast, you can adjust how yeah. quickly it flows coming out of that nozzle sure. with, the, with the knob, you know. Um, but we don't always do that with the information we're taking in or really anything that we're bringing. I know I've been known to um, not manage the flow as I'm eating donuts <laughs> <laughs> from time to time. You eat a few donuts, huh? I do love donuts. Oh, they're good. I do love donuts. Now, that, now even eating those has a purpose. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But um, talk to me a little bit more about about. Man, about managing flow because again the information is um it, it's it comes at you so fast and so hard you have to be able to manage yeah um, the flow of it to be able to like i don't know decompress or yeah. just you know understand what it was that you heard or read or or yeah. anything else if anything just validate the sources yeah totally. you know um so talk to me about that so i'll tell a story one of, one of my vip clients uh he's ceo of a film company so one of the top film companies in, in North America, the Southeast especially. And he was on the edge of burnout. And we, we sit down, we're about two hours into our VIP session. And I asked him, his name's David. I'm like, dude, you're, you're, he didn't say this, but I was like, you're looking for a way out of this business, aren't you? Mm. And they just had a record year. Mm. He got paid the most money. He never gotten paid. And his business had more success than it ever had. And I was like, and then let me guess, you're actually battling depression, aren't you? Wow. He's like, Mike, how did you pick up on both of those? I didn't tell you anything about that. I was like, well, let me look at your life. And, and I, in my zone of genius process, I have people take five different personality tests because they all measure something different. And so I have an accumulation of clues, the most clues they've ever had about their life, their gifts, their talents, where they suck at, where they're amazing at. I was like, David, based on, because we had looked in his workflow for his week. Mm. I was like, looking at your workflow, you're playing radically out of position. You're trying to be an administrative CEO mm -hmm. and you're a visionary CEO, but you're in a, stuck in all these meetings and they're like death to you. Mm -hmm. Like if, if, if you put a life or death list, your life is filled with mostly things that are bringing you death mm -hmm. and your body is literally almost revolting. Yeah. Like wanting to vomit up the toxicity. And, and he said, yeah, I just started uh, antidepressants last month. Wow. And he's a healthy dude, married, you know, successful. Yeah. And, and, but he unconsciously was acting in a way that he, he thought he was supposed to be a CEO. And in some way that was misaligned with his deepest gifts and yeah. what the company most needed from him. The company can grow into incrementally, but he's a visionary CEO. He's supposed to take radical leaps. Yeah. Like Steve Jobs takes radical leaps. Elon yeah. Musk, radical leaps. And they're not just, oh, it grow 10%. And, and so then in that session, the rest of the session, we started focus on rewiring his work schedule in alignment with his zone of genius, with his gifting, with his passion, with what lights him up. Mm. A month later, we do our next in-person session. Was, and he had a glow on his face. He was happy. And he was like, Mike, I have more passion in my business than I had in two years. Mm -hmm. More excited. And he cut out probably 60, 70% of the meetings that he was in. And he still had another 10 or 20% that he was reducing. Couldn't cut them all out, but he had reduced his administrative workload by 80% at that point. And he started, and the company started growing even faster. Yeah. Because he was inspired. Like as a leader, yeah. what's their number one job? Whether you're leading your family or leading your sports team as a coach or whatever, I got to make sure I'm inspired. I'm yeah. tapped in. Right. Yeah. It's, um, you know, again, when it comes to the mental health thing, 
it's very Im- important to me, in my opinion, and I'm no expert. Um, however, I know when I've had, um, I'm always doing work on myself, development yeah, on myself. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, you got to be careful. I've talked to Jim about this a ton, um, who also does a lot of uh, personal development. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I'll say, hey, man, Jim, it's almost like you're looking for more problems. Than so that, yeah. But you got to remember that you're looking for solutions, not yeah. more problems, which folks on grows. What is the uh, yeah. what they say about, um, you know, skiers don't look at the trees. They focus yeah, on the yeah. path because yeah, what you focus yeah. on is what you're going to hit. Exactly. Pilots don't look at the <laughs> mountain. They look at their yeah. path, you know. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, it, when you're when you're working on yourself, it's so important to do that. Um, talk to me about, um, more natural, natural solutions out there, you know, um, with, uh, you know, again, a few years ago, psychedelics were recreational only yeah, and yeah. bad, 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 Yeah, but they're natural. They're yeah. here. You know what I mean? And, and, um, and anything that's natural, that's not poison, that's taken in moderation and with some, uh, expertise behind it can be helpful. Right. Yeah. So I'm big on nootropics. Yeah. I, love I love nootropics. nootropics. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. Let's yeah. talk about nootropics. Yeah. For a minute. Yeah. So, you know, Anything that enhances your brain's focus and gets you back into that peak zone because you're like, I, I wrote my, my book when my wife was pregnant first trimester, she was going to sleep at nine 30. So I was like, I'm just going to get up at four 30 and write my book for three hours. <laughs> you know? And I would jack myself up with this genius brand nootropic and uh, matcha tea and go to work. We got to talk about that. I, I'm, um, I love. Uh, there's a company called um, Newtopia that I, that I yeah. love their stuff, which is a lot about. I but I'd try love, them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'd like to know more about yours as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? But their Newtopia is fantastic, and I'm grateful for our relationship with there. But again, I'm just always yeah. looking to explore, you know, yeah. and expand. If anything, just so I can learn how great Newtopia is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds if if you love them and it's working, because also everybody's brain chemistry is slightly different. So one supplement could work for someone and not work for someone else. That's so it's working that, for you then. That's the thing, you know. I found new uh, nootropics through um, uh, it, it was called um, uh, through a company called Elevate at the time, Elevacity, mm-hmm. and it was a happy coffee and they had a little happy yeah. pill. So it was a very um, mild dose of nootropics, yeah. but it did make a difference. And what I loved about the Nootopia products is they've got they've got so many different lines of, of nootropics. Yeah. So like you can stack them and and literally yeah. you can make your own concoction yeah. of nootropics. That. And that's when I really learned like the magic of like, all right, I mean, I can it's a, a noticeable difference in how mm-hmm. I feel. Hundred percent, and and tackling anything that we're doing or whatever it may be, all the way down from more energy to like sometimes I'm wittier and quicker. <laughs> it's literally like. The difference in when you get a great night's sleep versus a horrible yeah. night's sleep, dude, that's what nootropics can do if you do it right, right? 100%. And I think it's an underutilized resource in peak performance. So if I look at things that are underutilized in peak performance, uh, nootropics um, would definitely be one. So it sounds like that's a great company. Secondly, NAD, because it's like basically your cellular fuel and cellular energy. What's NAD? Uh Chemical name stands for nucleonide, if I remember correctly. But we'll stay with NAD. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I, I'm not even saying it fully correct, and you know, but it's used in 500 cellular processes. So everything your body does. So think of it as the foundational cellular fuel. Okay. And by the time you're 40, um, you're definitely deficient in America unless you're supplementing. So if you boost it back up, like my levels mm. are the equivalent of a healthy 12 year old now. And yeah. I feel that way. My brain is like sharp. I can play six, seven games of basketball, full court basketball on Monday nights, which I usually do now without pain and inflammation and getting yeah. super tired. Um, so it's number one, like a lot of anti-aging guys are into it. Joe Rogan, Tony Robbins, um, uh, David Sinclair, mm-hmm. Tom Brady, like Bill Belichick required the Patriots to take it since 2018. Wow. Okay. Um, That's awesome. So, Folks, if, you, and if you're watching with us today and not listening only, you know, you're looking at this guy and you're like, man, that is a good looking 30 year old. <laughs> Right. I'm actually 87. <laughs> well, you're not far off, bro. Like, serious. Like, seriously, tell everybody how old you are. Uh, I'm, I'm actually 44. 44. But, I'm yeah. I'm 40. I'd see. What is this? I'm 43. I just turned yeah. 43, right? So yeah, you look good, too. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot of work that goes into this. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah, yeah. You got you to gotta take care of ourselves. So, But then, you know, with NAD, the product I use is Genfinity, and, and that's the best one I've found. I've tried a bunch of others. And then the other uh, thing that I think is, is clearing out the baggage. Like mm. it's a lot harder to um, focus and be in the zone if you have, I call it like carrying around some bags of bricks. Mm. And that's the power, for example, of psychedelics or breath work or meditation or decisions to let go. Yeah. You know, 
and um in a psychedelics are, are you should be cautious with them and use them wisely and under proper guidance in most cases but if you get rid of the weight a lot of us carry emotional weight with us into the next year into the next decade no from, and it's like if we let it go like i feel so much lighter now than i did two years ago or a year ago absolutely and i have more joy i'm creating from a place of joy instead of grit Think about it this way, folks. So you know we're we're still in the uh, the beginning chapters of um, of the of the new year, twenty twenty four, and um, think about the feeling when you take down all the Christmas decorations and they're finally put away, and how you literally feel like lighter. You yeah. know what I mean? Like seriously, something that wasn't literally a physical thing on you. Yeah. It didn't even affect anything that you did, except mm-hmm. for maybe you had to move, move some furniture around for a tree or something like that. But I, I know if we feel it every year when Christmas is up, like the, and the last things put away. Yeah, it's like again, you do you feel lighter. You know yeah. what I mean? It's crazy how uh, baggage weighs on you when it yeah. when it's not physical weight. Yeah, exactly. And and with trauma, um, like or just friction in relationships or frustrations or unresolved issues the more we carry the heavier our load gets yeah and even look spiritually jesus said my yoke is easy my burden is light mm. how are we supposed to live with a easy burden you know a light burden in yeah. life we're supposed to and and then we can radiate the presence of joy and attract from that it's like we're attuning our antenna our brain antenna our spiritual antenna yeah. <laughs> we're tuning it to a higher vibration literally at the quantum level mm. so one of the other things so i've kind of gotten into quantum physics a little bit so we are you heard, have you heard a thing called phase entanglement i've heard of it i don't know much about it but i've so heard of it at the very quantum level when we when we uh, when two or more particles collide they leave a piece of each other on each other so Fair. the energy so if i bring in energy of joy a presence of expansion of uh, hope, hmm. then I'm leaving that on people and I'm literally pollinating almost like a bee, right? I'm right. pollinating or I can leave in negativity, weight, hmm. frustration, sadness, grief, and, and it can be generational. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, Duke University is doing uh, intergenerational trauma studies where they found that the next two generations of Holocaust survivors have biometric data points that showed they suffered a severe trauma, mm. even if they didn't in their mm-hmm. lifetime. So like generational, you know, Bible talks about generation, generational curses and all that. Well, now we're seeing evidence that some of that is real and then it's almost like epigenetically passed on. Dude, I've been, I've learned about that. Um, Pastor Roger Patton sent me a video talking mm-hmm. about, cause we, I had been talking to him a lot about generational well. Yeah. And he said, "Hey, man, check it out. There's this thing called generational sin. Yeah. And the more I studied it, the realized I realized, you know, the stuff that I'm passing down to my own son that are there are things that I work on that I don't like about yeah. myself, and then I'm working on fixing. Yeah, and I'm programming him with those yeah. same bugs. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, but if we can do the deep work, mm. like so, some of the tools we've done, emotion code is actually helpful for pass for releasing." It's a process of releasing emotions. Tony Robbins actually wrote the forward to the book, um, but it's releasing trapped emotions. So we've done that to release some generational trauma in my wife and I. And then um, for us, psychedelics have helped release. Like I had a session on psilocybin where I felt my dad grew up and was born in 1940 Germany, saw the bombers fly over, saw the Jews walk through the streets wow. at a, as a five-year-old, seeing these skinny people coming out of concentration camp. And then, it, you know, he was malnutrition he was eligible for malnutrition camps and like had um uh as a five-year-old would see the troops come into his house the allied soldiers Mm. come in so he's he's got some generational trauma and Mm. i had this weight of grief passed through that i frankly had been carrying all my life in december of 2022 and then at the end of it i came to my wife i was like and i I wept i've only wept twice in my life and i wept and i was like babe uh I think the season of suffering is over for us. Wow. We're stuck in a, almost a five year cycle of suffering. And sure enough, that was, you know, January 2023 was right around the corner. And like it was different. Wow. Energy was different. My finances started coming back. My business started coming back. And we were, were on the edge of getting her free mm. from the PTSD. So the suffering is necessary. Yeah. Right, because that's where you find your gifts. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? That's where you learn. Yeah. You know what I mean? Talk to me about that. So that was a powerful statement you just said. Um, talk to me about, you know, one, when you're when you're suffering, that means something good's coming behind it because yeah. it's, you know what I mean, because you're on your way out. Yeah. But talk to me about that. So the overcoming process is the becoming process. And if we accept that, guess what? Then we resist the becoming mm. a lot less. And That's we embrace right. the overcoming Obstacle is the way, as Ryan Holiday talks about in his book, or Marcus Aurelius talked about. So I no longer, and even if we did this interview a year ago or two years ago, I'm a different in a different presence because it's still stuck in the suffering loop. Mm. And I don't I would wouldn't have owned myself and my presence and my connection, my truth in a way that I do now. And but you have to go through those fires. Yeah. And and um and I, I don't look at them as something to be scared of. And even uh, whether you come from faith or not, like in James uh, 1 5, it says, Consider it all joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds. Mm. Because then they, they, you will produce character, and in character, you will produce perseverance, and perseverance, hope. That's right. Right? So That's we right. go through those processes, but you got to use them as fuel. Almost like, um, uh, what was Steven Seagal? He was a, a keto, I think, mm -hmm. where you would use the energy yeah. of your opponent to fight them. So let them supply. Yeah. 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 In my book I, in genius within, I talk about a metaphor of like, so all of us, we've flown on a Boeing 737. Well, how much does that sucker weigh? Mm -hmm. 485 tons. So how does this heaping metal bird get off into the night sky it faces something invisible, mm. invisible resistance mm. called air. And this air, if it faces it hard enough, at the right enough angle, that resistance would now cause it to lift off, carrying hundreds of passengers. But it has to face it. It can't run from it. Right? Yeah, dude. We love um, talking about the the difference between bison and cattle. Yeah. Yeah. You know run I mean? into the eye of the storm. Run into the storm and you'll spend less time in it. Yeah. Doing that. That's what the bison does. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So, folks, we're hanging with uh, Mike Zeller. You can check him out online at MikeZeller.com and on all social at the Mike Zeller. 